Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna to be getting into the beauty report for September 2018. If you missed this video last month, basically I kind of revamped my monthly favorites series. So now I'm gonna be doing a monthly beauty report, sharing updates on products I've hauled, I've been testing, I've been trying, what I've been loving, and what maybe I have been not loving so much. So we've got a ton of stuff to go over today. I've got a little bit of skincare, brushes, hair stuff, and a ton of makeup. So I anticipate this video is gonna be pretty long. Um, I will link timestamps in the description box of this video in case you would like to skip ahead or re-watch a particular part of this video that's of interest to you. Uh, and if you wanna come hang out with me while I chat about all this stuff, I really appreciate it. I also am gonna put it out there. Uh, so I live in a condo and pretty much every single week, landscapers come and like mow our grass and whatnot. And I've been waiting for them to stop making noise like basically all morning and they haven't done it yet. So I really, really don't want to wait any longer to film today. So I apologize if there's a lot of humming or weird background noise. It's it's people weed whacking right outside of my window. So with all that being said, uh, why don't we jump into this month's beauty report? So I don't have like a ton of skincare to talk about today, even though I have been trying out a lot of new products. I just wanna give it a little bit more time and hopefully we'll be able to update you on those products by the end of October. So the first product that I do wanna talk about is a cleanser from Lather. This is the Caviar Lime AHA Cleansing Cream. Uh, I got this essentially for free as part of a collaboration between the brand and Palm, which is an influencer community that I'm a part of. Uh, and Lather is a, a really cool kind of indie brand. They're cruelty-free. Their products use really quality ingredients. Like actually, their whole thing is they spend like 80% of their money on ingredients and 20% on packaging. And I can appreciate that. I think that's a really solid thing, especially with skincare. Uh, so this is basically a gentle exfoliating cleanser that uses all chemical exfoliants. So there's no scrubby bits in this. It's a very like creamy textured cleanser. Uh, I have been using this pretty much every single day in the morning. I haven't really tested this out too much to remove makeup um, because I would think, especially with an AHA cleanser or anything that's got a chemical exfoliant, I want that to be going on my clean skin, not necessarily going on my makeup to remove it. So I would probably only use this as a second cleanse anyway if I was gonna use it at night. I just liked it to kind of gently refresh my skin in the morning. It doesn't dry my skin or strip it in any way, so I do appreciate that. Uh, and it doesn't have any artificial colors, any artificial fragrances, any sulfates or parabens, but it does have all these fruit enzymes to help gently exfoliate your skin. So I don't think if you have very sensitive skin, you want to use this every single day because it may be a little bit too much. But if you're very, very oily like me and you're not super sensitive, this is a really nice like everyday morning cleanser to just kind of keep your skin feeling clear, clean, and not like tight and stripped and dry. Now, speaking about double cleansing and makeup removal, these next couple of products I have been using more at nighttime for that purpose. So Dermalogica sent me a PR package back in September with a few of their products. And the two that I feel like I can speak well to at this point are the cleansers they sent over. They sent me their pre-cleanse and then their special cleansing gel. So your pre-cleanse is essentially like an oil-based makeup remover that you put on first to break down on your makeup and then you go in and second cleanse with the special cleansing gel to actually remove all the residual oil and makeup from your skin. So here's the thing about this duo. It is excellent, it works really well, but it is very expensive. So my biggest issue with this is just the value. I think you can buy this duo actually together for $65 on the Ulta website, but that's still a lot of money. Like these are not products that are going to sit on your skin overnight like a serum or a moisturizer would and at least in that situation I can see it being a little more justified to spend the money when you're essentially putting something on and rinsing it off right away it's a little harder for me to say yeah sure I think it's worth spending over $60 now as an alternative the leaders uh, daily wonders what happened last night 
cleansing oil. I actually really like this a lot. It's very citrusy and this does a great job of breaking down makeup and works pretty much the same way the pre-cleanse does. But I want to say this is around $20. It's definitely more affordable than the Dermalogica is. So if you're looking for something that is a nice quality, but that's not quite as expensive as Dermalogica, this is what I would recommend. Usually I'll go in with this and then double cleanse with my Skin Fix Foaming Clay Cleanser, which is Honestly, like hands down my favorite cleanser ever of life. As someone with oily skin, that one does such a fantastic job of getting my skin really clean without ever making it feel dry. So I would definitely say when it comes to Dermalogica, I mean, these products work well. They don't have any nasty ingredients in them. They have a very like herbaceous, spa-like scent and feel to them. Uh, they don't strip your skin and they definitely will get your makeup off and get your skin clean. I just think there are other things that can do the same for a lot less money. So sometime in September, I shared a haul video with you guys. I picked up a bunch of stuff from Sephora and Ulta. I had redeemed like 2000 points. I shopped the Sephora customer appreciation sale. I picked up a ton of stuff and I have been trying a lot of it out and wanted to give you guys some updates on how some of these things were working. The first thing I wanna talk about are the Japanesque makeup brushes that I picked up. These are not all of them. Um, I did pick up quite a few because it just so happened that they were like clearancing a bunch of them out. I don't know if it was a mistake, but with my 20% off coupon, I got most of these brushes for like two to three dollars a piece. And they normally retail from anywhere from like 10 to $20 each. So it was a significant savings. And I figured it wasn't a really a huge risk. And I was curious to see if they're any good. Like I never hear anyone talk about Japanesque brushes. So I wanted to give you guys the scoop. So overall, I'm going to basically say this much. Considering how expensive these brushes are full price, I would not recommend them over say like Sigma's brushes. I think Sigma makes incredible brushes. They are a little bit more of an investment, but they are very much worth it if you want like really quality brushes that are gonna last a long time. These guys weren't the worst brushes ever, but they weren't the best for me either. Honestly, what I think it comes down to, it's not that these brushes feel cheap. They actually do feel pretty nice. It's just the texture of the bristles on some of the brushes I really was not a big fan of. These are a combination of natural and synthetic hairs. So the synthetic bristles are really soft, but some of the natural hair bristles on these brushes are like really scratchy. So like this powder brush here, I think it's a really cool shape and it's really nice for kind of like dabbing powder on to set your makeup. But sometimes I would feel like I was being stabbed in the face because the natural bristles kind of poke through and are really stiff. So that made this slightly less pleasant to use. And then like, for example, this little like crease brush here, this was just very, very scratchy and on your eyes, it's a very sensitive area. So I was not a fan of that. The actual shape of the brush is pretty decent. It's fluffy, so it's good for blending, but it's a little bit tapered. So you can kind of like really wedge color into your outer corner with this nicely. It just was very stiff and unpleasant to use. So I didn't like that. On the flip side, the flat top foundation brush, I I actually did like this one a lot. This one wasn't scratchy at all. It reminded me a lot of the Sigma F80 Flat Top Kabuki brush. Blends in your foundation really nicely. It doesn't leave a lot of streaks. It's very dense and very soft. So this guy, really nice. But again, if I could get the F80 like for the same price, I think I would go with the Sigma. They come with a two year warranty on their brushes. Like, I don't know, to me, I think it's just a better value, but like this wasn't bad. And then finally, the last brush that I think I did really like that I tried out was their blush brush. This one actually reminds me a lot of Luxie's blush brush in the way that it's shaped. It's kind of got a flat ferrule that fans out. And this type of brush I find is perfect for blending in slightly more pigmented blushes. You just pick up a tiny bit of product and then blend it in circular motions onto the apples of your cheeks. And it just diffuses and blends the product in really nicely and it's not too harsh. Sometimes if you use a blush brush that's too big or too dense, it deposits too much product on your cheeks and that can make you look more rosy than you wanted to. But like I use this to apply my blush today and I think it did a really nice job. This one's not scratchy at all. So overall, I think I'm pleased with some of the brushes that I picked up and I'm glad that I, I have them and I'm glad that I got them for like two or three dollars. That I mean, this brush for like three bucks was definitely worth it. But I don't know if I would necessarily say that it would be worth like 15 if that was what I had to spend, you know? Now in that same Ulta order, I picked up a couple of products from Persona Cosmetics. 
and I honestly have been loving pretty much everything that Persona has been doing recently. I think that Sona did a fantastic job at putting that brand together. They don't have a lot of products, but it seems like every launch they have is very well thought out. The quality is excellent and the prices are really reasonable. And I honestly would much rather a brand take their time and deliver a super solid launch than like constantly be launching new products every five seconds that are kind of like subpar or like an afterthought, if you will. Now the two products I picked up most recently from her line were one of the highlighters and one of the liquid lipsticks. Now this highlighter here, so absolutely freaking stunning. This is in the shade Zuma. Now there are only three shades available in this highlight, but I kind of feel like that's all you really need. I think there's one lighter than this and one deeper than this. This one has a really beautiful peachy gold kind of reflect to it. And these are insanely smooth, buttery, like creamy textured highlights. They remind me a little bit of like the Ofra formula, but maybe slightly thicker in texture. And on the skin, they are blindingly beautiful, very reflective and shiny. They kind of give you that wet look to the skin. There's no shimmer in this formula at all, no glitter in this formula, uh, but it is relatively intense. Now this is also the highlight that I'm wearing on my skin today. I've basically been wearing this highlight literally like almost every single day I've been wearing makeup because it's just a really gorgeous, beautiful formula. And while it is intense, I feel like it kind of just like melts into the rest of your makeup and doesn't look stripey or harsh, which I really appreciate. So this is something that I definitely highly recommend. I think the packaging is nice. It's a nice solid kind of like peachy nude packaging. You get a nice mirror in here. The pan is very generously sized. And I think these retail for $24 if I'm remembering correctly. So very reasonably priced compared to like other high-end brands like a Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector is what $36 or somewhere over 30 bucks. So considering that it's more than $10 cheaper to get the Persona, I think you will get just as equally a beautiful glow as you get with the Becca ones for a lot less money. And then this liquid lipstick formula has me so crazy impressed. I shared um, my thoughts on this on Instagram stories not that long ago. I had put this on and I shared like my lips for a matte liquid lipstick looked so healthy and smooth and not like crinkly and dried out. I was blown away. As a coffee break with Danny would say, I, what is this sorcery? I don't know what she put in this formula, but it dries down completely matte. It doesn't transfer, but it doesn't feel drying. It feels really lightweight on the lips and it just kind of smooths the texture of your lips and almost looks one with it as opposed to looking like a layer of paint that can like chip and flake off that's been painted on top. You know what I mean? So many liquid lipsticks that are transfer proof look like you're wearing a layer of something on your lips. It's also very affordable, under $20, which is really awesome. Uh, the only thing is there's only three shades of this. And to be honest, like, you know, there are three very classic shades. There's a nude, there's a pink, and then there's this red, which is called Holy Grail. This is the perfect red. Holy Grail is a great name for this because I think this red will look so stunning on basically anyone. The only reason I didn't pick up the other two is that I have a lot of nude and pink liquid lipsticks and I just felt like the red was actually something I had less of in my collection and would be a better investment for me. So if you're looking for a solid red lipstick for the holidays that's not gonna like get all over everything and you won't have to worry about touching up and then like getting all over your face, this is a solid option. Another thing that I talked about in that haul video is the Milk Makeup Blur and Set Matte Loose Setting Powder. So this was something I was very intrigued by and had really wanted to pick up since basically the moment I saw it launch. And so I've been testing and trying it out quite a bit over the last several weeks. And I'm not really sure how I feel about this product, which I mean, that being said, it's probably enough right there. If I was absolutely in love with it, you would know. Uh, I don't think it's a bad setting powder by any means. I just don't think it's necessarily the best setting powder for my oily skin. 
So when you set your makeup down with this product, it does look really beautiful. It's not too drying looking. It doesn't, it's matte, but like it's not cakey looking. Um, and it does really blur out the look of your pores. It doesn't enhance texture. So that's really awesome. I just found that I would get shiny quickly when wearing this compared to using say like the cover effects mattifying setting powder that would kind of control oil longer than this would i'm curious to see going into the fall and winter my skin tends to kind of calm down with the oil and i was testing this out kind of at the end of summer so maybe this will work better for me in the fall and winter i'll keep you guys posted if my thoughts change but for right now i'm kind of like meh about it. So another video that I filmed in the last month was a makeup swap with a few other girls that I'm friends with here on YouTube. Honestly, I had so much fun filming that video. Uh, and from that little stash of products that I received from my friend Maria, there were some things I absolutely fell in love with. Probably the most unexpected favorite from that video was this Makeup Forever um, Sculpting Powder or Artist Face Color. Yeah, they call them their Artist Face Colors. This one is S112, I believe, and it is a perfect like bronzing and contouring color for someone with a light medium complexion. This just gives you the perfect sculpted look that's natural. It's buildable, it's smooth, it blends really easily into your skin, it never looks patchy, it doesn't fade after two seconds. This has honestly been like my go-to contour bronzer type product since the day that I tried this on. I love my butter bronzer, don't get me wrong, that one is still my favorite like drugstore option, but I just think this looks so nice and so natural on the skin and it was just so easy to work with. So I highly, highly recommend this. I probably never would have even thought to try this product had Maria not sent it to me, but I'm so glad that she did. And this probably will not surprise you at all if you saw the makeup swap video, but these eyeshadows from MBA Cosmetics are freaking insane. So Maria sent me over three of the Silk FX pressed eyeshadows, which are these three on the perimeter here. And then this guy is a Chromalust eyeshadow. It's one of MBA's newest launches. And it is by far the trippiest eyeshadow I have ever used in my entire life. So these Chromalust eyeshadows are actually trichrome shadows. So they flip between three different colors, which is so bananas. This particular shade here is called Infatuation and it flips between blue, purple, and like an aqua green color. And honestly, on camera with the way that the lights are, it's hard to get the full effect. I feel like these are like an optical illusion in person. You look at it and it like my eyes are bugging out because all of the different shades are like flipping back and forth. It's so cool and so much fun. Not to mention the fact that the formula itself is crazy pigmented and really, really smooth. I just applied this on my lid in that video with my finger and it lasted all day. It went on like butter basically. And it was just the most unique eyeshadow I think I've ever used. It was just so cool. So there are, I think maybe like six shades or so available of this eyeshadow formula. Definitely, definitely check it out. I'll also link, I think Maria has like a discount code for MBA Cosmetics. So I'll throw that in the description box if you wanna save, I think like 10 or 15% on your order, send some love her way. But yeah, this was just the freaking coolest. MBA Cosmetics is a brand that nobody really talks about here on YouTube all that much, but they've got some really cool, unique color products, especially for the eyes. Uh, and the Silk Effects eyeshadows are also equally just like smooth, pigmented, really, really beautiful. I've been really enjoying uh, using these all over my lid. Like, just look at how stunning that is. Ugh, I can't, I can't get enough. So definitely would love to play around with more from NBA Cosmetics. I still honestly have glitters from that video that I haven't had a chance to use yet. So hopefully in a future beauty report, I'll be able to give you an update on those. Now, last month, I also received the first ever Boxy Lux box. It was something that I did pay for with my own money. And I did an unboxing for you guys on my channel. Again, I'll link it for you if you haven't seen it yet and you wanna check it out. Uh, I still am testing out a lot of products from that box. So I will probably have more thoughts for you in regards to those products at a later time. But there were just a couple things I did want to say something about. 
The first is this Luxie Airbrush Foundation Brush. Uh, this is from Luxie's new Pro Collection, and this is an incredible foundation brush. I can't deny it. It's so soft. It blends out your makeup beautifully, but this makeup brush is $38 if I was to actually go out and buy it, which is insane. Like just kind of, not that I want to like talk about Sigma every three seconds, but the Sigma F80 brush is around $20 full price and you can usually get it on sale because Sigma is always having promotions and things like that. Um, so I can't say that this applied my makeup drastically better than the F80. So is it really worth the extra like 10, $15? Probably not but it is a beautifully constructed brush and it's so, so pretty to look at. I mean, like the rose gold and the really cool handle. It's got this like soft touch packaging that's like really, really comfortable. It's got a little divot for your thumb. It's just a very well thought out product and it's very luxurious. Uh, it's just very, very expensive. So I am super glad I got this in Boxylux because I don't know that I would ever go out and actually buy this with my own money, but I'm really, really glad that I have it. The other product, okay, this is just something really, really stupid and random, but like, I have to mention it. Okay, so we got this little Dolly bow headband uh, from Vintage Cosmetics in the Boxylux box. This thing is $5, I think you can get it at Ulta. And I freaking love this headband. It's super cushy and really ridiculous, but adorable. And I basically wear this like every day in the morning when I wanna wash my face, when I'm like running around doing like dishes and housework and stuff to just keep my hair out of my face or when I'm doing my makeup. Like it's just so much fun. I didn't have a headband like this and I'd seen so many other people with headbands like this and now I'm really glad that I have one because it's just the best. It's really comfortable and it doesn't like totally screw up my hair uh, and I just love how ridiculous it looks. So five bucks at Ulta. If you don't have one of these, they're kind of amazing. So let's move on to some new product launches that I've been sent recently. Uh, the first ones here are from Carity. They sent me over all four shades of their new Blush Bomb palettes. These are the two that I've opened. The other two I may give away to other people uh, because I'm not sure that the color stories will suit my skin tone. But the ones I've been using are Coral Kaboom and Pow Pink. And these are really pretty excellent, especially for the price. These retail for, I think, $14, which is not totally insane. And each one contains two blushes and a highlight. So this is the coral one, which is really more orangey, and I honestly love orangey blushes. I think they're very underrated, especially if you have a warm undertone to your skin. These are amazing, definitely loving using this. And then the pow pink one is more sort of traditional pink very kind of cool toned vibes. So essentially um, the formula in these palettes is really nice because it's not overly pigmented. And I know everyone talks about pigmentation, pigmentation, but when it comes to face products, you don't want to go too heavy with your pigment because then it's usually way harder to blend out. I think with blush, you're much better off being able to build up the color to the intensity that you want than going in and then having to like fix a situation where you're way more flushed than you want it to be. So the highlighters in here feel very smooth, but they are slightly more stiff to the touch than say like the uh, Persona Cosmetics one. They describe them as a buildable highlight. So as you can see, I mean, it definitely will reflect light for sure, uh, but it's not as intensely blinding as like say a Becca highlight. It's a little more on the frosty side, I would say. Uh, some of these may be a little light on people with a deeper complexion. Like I think this shade Perf here does come off a little bit on the whitish side on the skin. So if you had a very deep complexion, it may look a little ashy but they do have other color varieties with deeper blushes and highlights that I think would be good for darker skin. So that's really cool. Uh, but in general, I feel like this is a great like everyday little blush palette because you get a couple of blush options. You can either wear them layered together or individually and then you have your coordinating highlight. You get a little mirror in here. The packaging is cute, but it's cardboard, has a nice magnetic closure. So it's nothing that's like crazy high end, but I do think it looks nice. I like the kind of like blush explosion design on the packaging. I think it's pretty cool. And honestly, when it comes to blush or face palettes, I feel like this amount of product is 
perfect. Like really, do you need more than two blush shades and a highlight? Uh, oftentimes bigger palettes have more product suited for different skin tones and you only end up using a couple shades anyway. So I think you just find the one of these that best suits your personal preferences and your skin tone and you're pretty much good to go. And then I've been testing out these gel eyeliners from Esquito. Uh, they did send these over to me a little while back. Esquito is a false lash brand. This is their first ever makeup launch, which you know, makes sense, false lashes. Pair it with an eyeliner. So these are essentially a gel liner. They're an automatic twist up pencil. There is a little sharpener on the bottom if you want to sharpen the point of your liner and get a little bit more precision. Uh, they are relatively creamy, but not the most slippy and creamy eyeliner I've ever used. Uh, when you draw them on your eyes, like they don't pull or tug at all. They're pretty pigmented, but they are just like slightly more stiff than some other gel pencils I have used. Uh, you have a little bit of playtime with these guys to smudge them out before they dry and set in. And then once they're set, I mean, these things like do not budge. They're very, very transfer resistant, water resistant. They hold up decently well in the water line. So that's pretty excellent. They're $16, which is kinda up there in price. I think you can get comparable decent eyeliners from the drugstore for half the price. Uh, but if you were considering picking these up, you were curious about them, I don't have any complaints about the formula. I think they work perfectly fine. So pretty recently, I shared a video trying on a full face of Wander Beauty products. Again, I'll throw that one up in the cards or link it in the description box if you wanna check it out. Uh, so I have been using those products quite a bit since filming that video. I had already been testing some of them out for a while. Some of them were more like first impressions when I did that try on. Uh, I'm not gonna touch on every single product that I spoke about in that video. I did wanna just highlight a couple that I had pretty strong feelings about. Uh, the first is the Wander Beauty Wanderlust Powder Foundation. This is probably my favorite product from everything that I received from Wander. I think it is pretty amazing. Uh, I am one of those people that does like powder foundations because I have very oily skin. They tend to work well for me. But I was just so impressed with how absolutely creamy and beautiful and easy to blend this product was. So uh, the compact comes with a little sponge like this and you essentially just kind of like wipe the product onto your skin. It like blends itself, it's so easy. That is the foundation that I'm wearing today. And honestly, it provides really nice coverage. Like it's not full, full to the point where you look cake face, but it's not super light either. It just kind of makes your skin look like skin. Some of your natural imperfections so through just a little bit, but it doesn't look heavy or dry or cakey, which I think is really awesome. Honestly, I just go in with concealer first to cover up any areas of like greater concern to me and then top it off with this. And I feel like my skin looks pretty flawless. I mean, this doesn't settle into fine lines for me. It doesn't enhance my pores or texture on my skin. I feel like it makes my face look really smooth. And while it goes on matte, once your natural oils kind of blend with it, it gives a really dewy, luminous finish to the skin. Like it just looks very like sort of satiny and healthy, which I really like. I don't find that I end up looking insanely shiny. And with this being a compact, I mean, I can throw this in my purse if I absolutely need to touch up. So all in all, big, big fan of this. I would say the biggest downside is the shade range. There are only five shades available of this foundation. Now, obviously it does flex a little bit with um, different skin tones and undertones. Like I don't think this needs to be an exact perfect match to your skin because of the type of the formula that it is. It's not that full, full coverage foundation that you have to get just right. But I do wish they had like at least 10 shades, especially on the deeper end. If you look at the swatches of this, I feel like the first four shades seem very close together and then there's a big gap between like the medium tan shade or whatever and the deepest shade. So I would love to see Wander include a few more deeper shades just to bring that inclusivity to the table. It's been a big discussion in beauty as of late uh, and for good reason. So considering how amazing this formula is, I would love to see them expand the shade range at some point in the future and just make things that are a little bit friendlier of people with deeper complexions. And also just as another little aside, given the fact that this comes with a puff and you're applying it with a puff, I would recommend that you wash your puff with like soap and water and let it air dry like once a week if you're using this every day because I feel like it gets pretty grimy 
with daily use and I don't love the idea of putting something on my face back in the compact back in my face and like especially if I'm touching up on the go your skin can get bacteria on it and yes powder doesn't harbor bacteria as much as a cream does I just I don't love it so I try to keep my puff clean uh, I do feel like sometimes liquid foundations with the pump are a little more sanitary than something like this but again, I'll, I kind of live with it because I really like the product. Now this guy, I feel like I have a love-hate relationship with. This is the Wander Duelist Concealer. And really, really what it comes down to is that I love half of this product and I really don't like the other half, which is such a bummer. Uh, this is a dual concealer. So on one end, you have a stick concealer. And then on the other, you have an illuminating liquid concealer or like your standard you apply with a dough butt applicator. Now the stick concealer portion of this is amazing. I absolutely love the way this covers. It like basically makes your imperfections disappear, but it really melts into your skin beautifully. It's very creamy, really easy to blend out. I've been using like my e.l.f. Flawless Concealer Brush to buff this into my naked skin before I apply the powder foundation on top. It's so easy and it looks beautiful. It doesn't like cake up weird around my nose or start to break apart during the day. It's been really bomb. But the liquid concealer, I don't really like it very much on my under eyes. I feel like it's too thin, it doesn't provide enough coverage, and it's not brightening enough. So I have the shade medium in both the foundation and in the concealer, and I think the stick portion of this matches perfectly to my skin and works really well with the shade of the foundation. I kind of wish that the illuminating concealer was a little lighter and a little brighter because most people don't want to match perfectly their skin when they're um, applying concealer to their under eyes. They want something that's gonna make that area look a little bit more alive. Not drastically so, but just like a little bit lighter and brighter. I felt like this just kind of made my under eyes look a little darker and it dried down a little creepy and I just, I didn't love it. I didn't love the way it wore and I didn't love the way it looked. I am a Tarte Shape Tape girl. I love the new Too Faced Multi Use Sculpting Concealer. Even like the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer, I like over this guy here. So. That really bummed me out. Like if I could just buy the stick concealer aisle all by itself, I would be like, yes, give that to me all day, every day, because that was amazing. I just really was not a huge fan of the uh, illuminating one. All right, guys, we're down to the last two products. One is a makeup product, one is a hair product. Let's chat about the makeup product first. Uh, the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. I picked this guy up back in, I don't know, August or so. Uh, was really curious because I've heard so many influencers talk about this product and how amazing it is. Uh, and I was also really intrigued by the aerosol mist on this. It's different than your standard, um, you know, setting spray and that it has a continuous spray and it does not like aggressively attack your face. I will say the mist on this is beautiful. It's very fine, it's very even. It honestly is one of the best like mechanisms of a mister and a setting type spray that I've ever used. Now I will say this is probably not the best setting spray for someone with oily skin. This is gonna be your go-to guy if you have normal to dry skin because it makes you look dewy AF. And like not like dewy in a like greasy chicken kind of way, like dewy in a really beautiful way. I understand now why so many people say they use this to kind of like melt their makeup down and make it look more like skin when it's looking a little bit too powdery because honestly that is exactly what this does. The second ingredient next to water in the spray is glycerin. And glycerin, it's the same thing that's in Max Fix Plus, gives you that very sort of hydrated, luminous appearance to the skin. So by spraying this on, it's going to make your makeup not look powdery and like makeup. But if you're really oily, it is not going to help control shine. So your skin may look really beautiful right after using this, but then like I've noticed a few hours later, your natural oils start to kick in and then you're more likely to look greasy. So I could see if you're oily and maybe you're going to an event or something and you're not gonna have your makeup on for more than a couple of hours and you want it to look really good really fast, this is a great way to get you there in like, you know, three seconds. But if you're planning on wearing your makeup all day long and you're really oily, I don't think this is the best setting spray to use. I still think the Urban Decay All Nighter is my favorite for really locking in makeup and helping it wear longer. This is a really great setting spray for making your makeup look less like makeup. So uh, price on this is, I wanna say like 15, $16. Not the cheapest, 
not the most expensive. Uh, you can get it at Ulta if you're curious to pick it up. So I think ultimately whether or not this is worth buying is gonna come down to your skin type, your personal preference, whether or not you would have a use for this type of product. But as far as like a setting spray goes, uh, I think it's really nice and I actually like the way that it applies. And finally, let's talk about a dry shampoo from IGK. I have the First Class Charcoal Detox Dry Shampoo. I won this in a giveaway. It's a little travel size can. Let me tell you, this stuff is pretty amazing. Now my scalp is oily just the way that my face is. So I find that like lightweight dry shampoos do not cut it for me at all. Maybe like on same day freshly washed hair, like if by the evening I'm looking a little flat and want a little bit of life texture, want to refresh my hair, I can use a sort of nice light dry shampoo. But if I'm going on second day hair or Lord third day hair, which honestly I don't get too very often because it looks crazy, I need a dry shampoo that's gonna really soak up that oil and not make my hair look greasy and flat. And this is heavy duty stuff. Like, first of all, the sprayer on this is intense. It like deposits quite a bit of product, but the actual product itself really soaks up oil. I feel like charcoal has been a lifesaver. Like it's been a total game changer for my hair. I have a charcoal shampoo from Brooklyn Botany that I'm obsessed with that does such a good job of detoxing my scalp without drying out my hair. Uh, so something like this I have found works really, really well for me for making my hair look essentially like I freshly washed it on a day where I have it. So if you were like looking at this and thinking, you know, is it worth the money because it's pretty expensive, uh, it is a really good dry shampoo. Yes, it is pricey. Maybe not everyone thinks it's worth investing in, but I have no complaints about this. I feel like it really does a great job of keeping my hair in check. So that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. If you made it to the end of this video, kudos to you because I know I just sat here and talked for like an hour and a half. Hopefully I will be able to edit down this footage to something somewhat reasonable. But uh, either way, I hope these little product reviews were helpful to you. Definitely give this video a thumbs up if you're enjoying these series and like product reviews and updates and whatnot. If you're not already subscribed to my channel and you want to see more of my face in your subscription feed, make sure you click that button before you go. I try to upload videos on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Uh, life is, you know, crazy. I have a job and do other things. So sometimes you just got to take care of life and YouTube has to wait. But I always really, really love the anytime I have the opportunity to sit down and film for you guys and to chat with you in the comments. So thank you so much for all of your support. I hope I will see you here again. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.